North Korea's long shadow has stretched into Russia's front lines, with nearly 12,000 troops now stationed alongside Russian forces against Ukraine, according to Ukraine's military intelligence, HUR, report on October 24. First sightings of North Korean troops were recorded on October 23, signaling a new chapter in Moscow and Pyongyang's military cooperation as Russia seeks to reinforce its war efforts. The deployment includes 12,000 North Korean soldiers, 500 officers, and three generals, with Russian Deputy Defense Minister Yunus Bek Yevkurov supervising training and preparations at five Russian military sites in the east. These training grounds in Ekaterinoslavka, Kenyaze Vokonsko, Sergeyevka, Usurysk, and Ulan Ude are actively equipping soldiers with winter gear, ammunition, and essential supplies like monthly rations of soap and toilet paper. When questioned at the BRICS summit in Kazan about the North Korean military presence in Russia, President Vladimir Putin indirectly acknowledged it, noting the lawmaker's recent ratification of a strategic partnership with North Korea. Referring to satellite images allegedly capturing these troops on Russian soil, he remarked, it's a serious thing. Images of North Korean soldiers in Russia are a serious thing. If there are images, then they reflect something. I want to draw your attention to the fact that it was not Russia's actions that led to the escalation in Ukraine, but the 2014 coup d'etat, supported primarily by the United States. We know what and how is done when launching Ukraine's unmanned marine vehicles in the Black Sea. We know who is present there, from which European NATO countries and how they carry out this work. The same applies to instructors, military personnel, not mercenaries, but military personnel. Russian lawmakers swiftly ratified a pact with North Korea, obligating both nations to provide immediate military assistance if attacked, a rekindling of Cold War-era alliances in modern conflict. Meanwhile, the United States has issued a stark warning, with National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby declaring that North Korean forces participating in combat in Ukraine are fair game for Ukrainian defense. I mean, we, we don't really know uh, what they're going to be used for, where they're going to, if they're going to, if they're going to deploy, where they're going to deploy and to what purpose. I can tell you one thing, though, if they do deploy uh, to fight against Ukraine, they're fair game. They're fair targets. The U.S. shared intelligence that North Korean soldiers had traveled by ship from the Wan region to Vladivostok, then on to Russian training sites. Kirby expressed high concern over potential combat involvement, noting the U.S. is consulting closely with Ukraine and allies. In response, South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol signaled a policy shift, suggesting South Korea might reconsider its prohibition on providing lethal aid to Ukraine if North Korea's involvement intensifies. Meeting with Polish President Andrzej Duda in Seoul on October 24, Yoon emphasized security needs amid North Korea's actions. While Pyongyang officially denies troop deployments to Russia, video footage has reportedly surfaced showing North Korean soldiers stationed at Russian camps. South Korean media also reported on October 22 that North Korea may have dispatched pilots trained to operate Russian aircraft, raising security concerns in Seoul. Amid these developments, Washington remains vocal yet cautious. Kirby has promised more details in the coming days as the U.S. assesses North Korea's role in the war, a factor that could intensify regional tensions and draw the Korean peninsula deeper into Ukraine's conflict.